Hello again, friends. I'm Patty, the girl with blue energy, and I also have bipolar disorder. Today, I'm talking about the eight most surprising facts about bipolar disorder. And you're going to want to listen into this one because I'm not talking about the same old facts you guys already know about. I think you will find these facts really interesting, and some of them might even shock you. And I'd really appreciate your help, guys. If you can, please click the like button on this video as it helps me to get this video into the algorithm. And I'd really love to hear your comments, especially if you have bipolar disorder. Let me know what you think about this video and these facts. Do any of them surprise you? Fact number one, bipolar disorder is a physical illness with physical symptoms. Most people think bipolar disorder is just a mood disorder that causes us to have extreme mood swings, but it's more than that. It causes physical symptoms. One of the biggest effects it has is on our sleep. It can cause us to need very, very little sleep or be extremely tired and need a lot more sleep. But aside from that, it can cause a lot of other physical symptoms you may not be aware of. It can cause us to have stomach aches, nausea, diarrhea, and other GI symptoms, and it can affect our heart. It can cause heart palpitations, chest pain, a higher pulse rate, and higher blood pressure. In fact, people with bipolar disorder are twice as likely to die from coronary heart disease because of its effect on our heart. And we are twice as likely to die an early death in general because of medical causes, not suicide. This is because bipolar disorder takes a very large toll on our physical health. It's also been linked to several pain conditions, and I will be talking about that next week in next week's video, but I'll mention a few. People with bipolar disorder are three and a half times more likely to suffer from migraines, and it's also been linked with some other conditions like fibromyalgia and rheumatoid arthritis. And I have more information on that in my blog post, which I've left in the description. There's a lot of facts about um, the physical effect it has on our health that you can read more about there. Fact number two, preemies and low birth weight babies are more likely to develop bipolar disorder. Babies that are born with a low birth weight are two and a half times more likely to develop a psychiatric disorder in adulthood. And babies that are born with a very low birth weight, meaning 3.3 pounds or smaller, are four and a half times more likely to develop a psychiatric disorder. But what's more is preemies are also more likely to develop bipolar disorder. Babies born between 32 and 36 weeks are 2.7 times more likely to develop bipolar disorder, and babies born before 32 weeks are 7.4 times more likely to develop bipolar disorder. So I'm curious how many of you with bipolar disorder were either born prematurely or born with a low birth weight. I was an identical twin, so I was both born prematurely and with a low birth weight, and I found this fact really interesting. Fact number three, nightmares may predict a manic episode. People with psychiatric disorders tend to have more nightmares than the general public. Although we've researched nightmares and schizophrenia more than bipolar disorder, People with bipolar disorder also have a lot of nightmares. And for some people, nightmares can predict an upcoming manic episode, particularly if their nightmares involve death or some type of injury or bodily harm. Fact number four, people with bipolar disorder are more sensitive to sunlight. And no, we're not vampires, but we are more sensitive to sunlight. And this may be because sunlight regulates our circadian rhythms and people with bipolar disorder have really sensitive circadian rhythms. This is why you see changes in our mood when the weather and seasons change. Across the US, around 3% of the population has seasonal affective disorder. But among that small 3%, 25% of those people also have bipolar disorder. 
but you also see other patterns. When it's spring or summer, you will see more episodes of mania. And when it's winter, you will see more episodes of depression. And we know that because we see a rise in patients being hospitalized for mania in the spring and summer months and depression in the winter months. Fact number five, bipolar disorder is more common in women and women may be more severely affected by it. We think this is because of our fluctuating hormones. This is why our symptoms tend to get worse right around the start of our period and also during pregnancy, the postpartum period, menopause and perimenopause. And because of our fluctuating hormones, this is what makes our disorder more complicated, especially during pregnancy, and what makes it often more severe and more difficult to manage. Um, women with bipolar disorder tend to have bi more bipolar too, and we also have more rapid cycling bipolar, which is largely due to our hormonal fluctuations. Fact number six. Bipolar disorder may be a metabolic disorder of the brain. You may have heard that bipolar disorder is caused by a chemical imbalance, but a growing number of psychiatrists and mental health experts are starting to challenge this. There's been a number of studies on this, and there is no evidence to support this theory. I have links to this on my blog because this is widely spread amongst the bipolar community that bipolar disorder is a chemical imbalance. While chemicals certainly play a role in bipolar disorder, there is growing evidence to support the fact that bipolar disorder is a metabolic disorder of the brain. Dr. Chris Palmer, a Harvard-educated psychiatrist, wrote a book called Brain Energy, which I'm going to encourage everyone that watches my channel to read that explains the science of how our brain works and why he believes bipolar disorder is caused by a metabolic disorder in the brain rather than a chemical imbalance. And he believes that we have um, the we have a metabolic issue with our mitochondria, and he explains mitochondria better than I could ever do. But mitochondria are basically the um, cells powerhouse. They break down the food we eat and convert it into energy called ATP. And people in bipolar with bipolar disorder may have issues with this process and not produce enough ATP during metabolism. And this is what causes the issues with neurotransmitters in our brains. And um, he's the first doctor to promote the ketogenic diet, which I've been following for over five years. And I'm really grateful and glad that the research is finally coming out to support this. But the ketogenic diet has been the most effective medication I have ever taken. It has completely changed my life. So this is why fact number six is so important to me. But he is not the only one in the medical community discussing the fact that our brains may not metabolize things correctly, that we have a metabolic disorder. There is a theory in the med medical community called the selfish brain theory that discusses the fact that our brains use 20 to 25 percent of our total calories. Yes, that's right. All that extra overthinking we do is why we burn so many calories. But our brain metabolizes um 25% of our calories. And when our brain is using up all of our energy to convert um, food into ATP, it may take away resources from the rest of our body to break down glucose. And they believe this is one of the reasons why we have um, a large percentage of us have issues with type 2 diabetes and other metabolic issues. Fact number seven. Spiritual experiences can be confused with bipolar disorder. I recently watched a documentary called Crazy Wise where they compared how we treat mental illness in the United States with how it's treated in other parts of the world. In other parts of the world, people can have mystical, spiritual, or even psychotic experiences and they're not seen as being mentally ill. These people may become 
spiritual leaders within their community. They may become healers or shamans or mystics or other types of spiritual leaders within the community. But even in the United States, we recognize that religion and spirituality play a role in people's lives and that not every experience that resembles bipolar mania is bipolar disorder. Some of our religious highly emotional experiences may mimic the symptoms of bipolar mania, but they're not bipolar disorder. This may be seen in churches, for example, in our Pentecostal movements. You see people have highly emotional experiences. They may dance, sing, be slain in the spirit, or even speak in tongues, but nobody would consider this a psychotic symptom or a bipolar manic symptom. And this is why the DSM now has a diagnostic diagnostic code for spiritual experiences. So if you have a spiritual experience or spiritual awakening, you can seek out counseling or treatment. And this is diagnosed as a religious or spiritual problem. Fact number eight, medications don't work for 50% of bipolar patients. 50% of us are considered treatment resistant. That means we've tried multiple medications or multiple combinations of medications and still haven't found a medication that works. And among the people that do find medications that work, 90% of them will have a relapse within two years. And typically, this is an episode of depression. We still don't have an effective treatment for bipolar depression, and that is because many of us can't take antidepressants. They make us manic. So for 50% of us, we do not just take a little pill and magically get better. And this is one of the misconceptions about bipolar disorder. It is very, very difficult to manage, and many of us are treatment resistant. I love hearing your feedback, so please let me know what you think in the comments. And of course, if you like this video, please help me out by clicking the like button and subscribing to my channel.